the multilayer perceptron abbreviated as MLP uh, is a, a type of artificial neural network that is widely used uh, for both classification and regression problems, right? So um, it kind of consists of different interconnect connected nodes. We call this neurons, right? And how it works, it just transmits information from the input to the output. Let's look at an illustration here. So for example, this is an artificial neural network, MLP, because it has more than one hidden layer, right? Uh, again, the outer left uh, layer is called the input layer. So this corresponds to the number of features. So in our case here, if I quickly just type here, get the number of columns, right? Okay, so this will give us one, two, three, four, five, right? So in our case here, we would have, you know, three or actually five neurons, right, for input. And then uh, on the far right here, we have the red dot. This would correspond to our output or target variable. In our case here, this is what we want to predict, the price. What's in between here is what we refer to as the hidden layer, right? You can see here we have three hidden layers. Uh, they usually are between the input layer and the output layer. And each of these hidden layer has one, two, three, four, four neurons, right? So they're all interconnected together, right? Uh, and it helps to transmit information from the input. Uh, a lot happens here. So uh, it's a feed forward network. And uh, during the training process, you know, we try to, you know, uh, adjust the weights and parameters to get minimize the, uh, the loss, right? So again, uh, this MLP is well suited for small and medium sized data sets, right? Especially where the input and output are actually straightforward. Okay. Again, also, uh, it, this is where MLP shines, especially where you have inputs and outputs that are nonlinear, right? But if you have a linearly uh, separable uh, uh, data, then uh, you know, all these other different uh, algorithm might be sufficient for that kind of uh, you know, uh, problem. And again, it's very capable of uh, complex modeling. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, small to medium size uh, data set. And for example, some of the applications here that could be used with MLP uh, include image recognition, speech recognition, uh, natural language pr uh, uh, processing and predictive, uh, predictive modeling, right? So uh, also multi-layer perceptron is more beneficial, uh, much more beneficial if you are, you know, using very large amounts of data, data set, right? Uh, uh, meaning that you have so much amounts of uh, training data that's available, then uh, this is where multi-layer perceptron uh, will actually, uh, you know, you should be able to create a very complex architecture that's going to uh, do some training here. But on the on the flip side, uh, one of the limitation is that it's computationally, uh, you know, intensive to train, uh, especially if you're dealing with large data set and large networks. Okay, so again, this is a, a standard implementation in sklearn. Uh, again, you can see this comes under neural network MLP regressor, but in advanced frameworks and uh, you know uh, like TensorFlow, Keras, and PyTorch, they are very comprehensive. Uh, flexible, highly customizable, uh, especially for building and training, um, you know, these deep learning models. So if if you decide to go that route, uh, it's much more uh, beneficial to use these different frameworks, especially if you are dealing with, uh, you know, very large deep learning fr uh, frameworks, right? Uh, again, uh, you know, that's not to say you can use multi-layer perceptron. So let's look at how to implement that. So again, we get this from... Uh, uh, this this uh, class here, MLP regressor. So uh, again, it has a lot of parameters, right? And these parameters, we can use it for hyperparameter tuning. So let's look at just one here, the hidden layer size, okay? So this returns a tuple, right? So N uh, underscore layer minus two just means we are removing the input and the output. So, you know, this will be the hidden layer. So anyway, but this is the default, right? So, uh, and then a default there is a hundred. So you can imagine a hundred. Uh, so a default actually is one. So when you remove those two, you just remind with one, and then that has a hundred neurons. So that'll be a very long 
uh, hidden layer. Okay, there are different activation functions. Uh, in our case, we're going to be using our solver is Adam activation. You know, you could use Relu logistic. Um, again, uh, I won't go into much details about that. And then again, I think we have a parameter here called maximum iteration. So this is just how many times, you know, sometimes in deep learning we call this epoch. How many times do you want to see, uh, have a pass, uh, uh, you know, through your data? So for example here, let's suppose, let's say you have a training data set with 100 examples, right? And you wanna set the number of uh, epoch here, maximum iteration, maybe to, uh, in our case here, we can just say 100. Default is 500, right? So what that means is that your model will see these examples, you know, the 100 examples uh, 10 times, right? Uh, actually, let's set it, yeah, 100 times, right? Let's say we had 1,000, so we set it to 100. That means it will see it uh, 100 times, right? Uh, for a total of uh, 100 times, you know, uh, so we have uh, 100 times 100, right? A hundred times a thousand for a total of maybe ten thousand training updates. So that's what it means. But here the default here is uh, so if we look at maximum iteration, uh, the default here is um, so we go where the maximum iteration is. So the default here is two hundred. So let's say you uh, again using that example. So let's say you had a thousand uh, uh, training examples, right? And you set this to two hundred. So essentially it just means that your model will see each of these 1,000 examples 200 times, right? So that means there'll be a total of uh, 100, I mean, 200 times 1,000, right? Training updates, okay? So uh, again, we'll just give this to 500. Uh, activation, we'll just leave everything, uh, Relu, Adam, and all that. And then we fit this, and then we use the predict function, right? So we run that and we generate our metrics here. So we run that again. Um, I've run this a few times, you know, uh, it, you know, doesn't improve uh, very much. I mean, of course, you know, uh, our data set is quite small. So, but again, I just wanted us to uh, see how to implement this. So again, just notice that, um, just pay attention uh, or, or to consider uh, using this, especially when you're having uh, medium size to you know small uh, data sets right that are have straightforward inputs and that's it so in terms of performance uh, summary so if we run this uh, again it will just generate uh, this is just a small code that will try and uh, create for us a summary of all the different uh, uh, algorithms that we already looked at and generate for us the R squared and RMSC. So just from this table here, we can see uh, linear regression and re regression have the highest R squared, okay, followed by random forest. Uh, Multi-layer perceptron doesn't do very well. Uh, same with uh, decision tree uh, and canon. But again, uh, this does not give us the optimal uh, model. So we can still perform additional steps, you know, like cross validation and grid search, just to find the optimal parameters that we can use before we make uh, a final decision. Uh, again, maybe that's something we'll see in another video.